Hi, my name's Jacob and welcome to the first episode of Guy Locks Himself in His Room to Learn Anything. A show where I lock myself in my room and I'm not allowed out until I have mastered that particular skill. So I believe in intense learning but I'm also a guy who gets very distracted very easily. So to eliminate distractions, I am locking myself in my room to learn key shot. <laughs> and I'm not allowed out of my room, ever, until I have mastered the skill I've set out to do. So to help me in this, I have brought in a chili bin of supplies, tea, and when I have to go to the bathroom. No, actually, I'm just kidding. I'm a civilized man, and there is a perfectly good toilet right around the corner of my room. So the rules are: I have to stay in my room except for when I need to use the lavatory. Oh, I say we are grand, aren't we? Yes, this is dumb. I admit this is dumb. This is crazy. But hopefully, I'll learn a lot. So, as for the learning, I've never used Keyshot before. Never, ever, even opened the program. And. By the end of this day, or however long this assignment takes, heck, I might be here till tomorrow, who knows. What I am setting myself up to do is that on Instagram there's this amazing page called Render Weekly, which is basically they set a new object for a whole lot of designers and stuff to render. Absolutely stunning renders just done by everyone, and they're, they're gorgeous. And so my goal by the end of this challenge is to make a render that is good enough to be posted on this Instagram page. Pretty ambitious. So the brief is we have to render what are called side trays. So this designer, yay designer, created all of these different trays. And the goal is that we have to render them in a really nice way. And that's this week's render. So thus is brief to render das trays. Okay. Let the madness, hopefully thorough amount of learning, begin. So when starting to learn a new skill, you can kind of feel like this. I'm going on an adventure! But if you don't learn the lay of the land, you can end up like this. So the way I began is I went to the Keyshot YouTube channel and just started with their very basic tutorials about how to sort of understand the workflow and the workspace of Keyshot. I went through the entire session, which was about sort of eight videos. And while it seemed kind of basic, just the process of doing it and playing around with the tools allowed me to sort of figure out what the rough landscape of Keyshot was, which was very useful. So I have encountered a little problemo. So, unbeknownst to me, I downloaded the very limited version, and what it does is it leaves a watermark on everything. So that's a problem. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I've sent an email to the people who run it, and I've requested them give me a full version. I let them know I'm making a video about it. So hopefully, hopefully they'll get onto that soon. Two thousand years later. All right, great news. Garrett from Keyshot got back to me, and he has now given me the link. Aha! Marvelous. All right, let's recap. So this first step was me sort of exploring the landscape. I've done the basic tutorials. I've done a more advanced tutorial, and I now have a good sort of grasp of how to use Keyshot. So the next step now is planning. And in planning, we're gonna A, first look for inspiration for our render, and then B, sort of plan out how we want to render it. So using my favorite app, Sketchbook, I did a very, very rough drawing of what my idea was. Okay, so this is roughly the idea. What it's gonna be is everything. Objects that are gonna be in it, the background's gonna be one color, maybe pink. While the tray itself is going to be a different colour. I'm hoping that the contrast between having the background and the objects in it is the same colour. And the tray being a different colour is going to add for some beautiful contrast. So now that I got it down, I need to create it. Cool! So to create the infinite background, I created a platform with a raised edge at the back with a slope. This sort of gave it the look of infinity, so when you looked at it on a particular angle, you could not see background. Change colors, colors of the tray, it was starting to look good. Yeah, but then the problem occurred. So I was bringing in pre made objects offline, like pens, paper clips, and stuff like that, but whenever I put them in, they turned real, real small. See, pen, what? So I had to enlarge them, and then placing them just got trickier and trickier, and they were sort of like going through the objects, so I took them into Fusion 360, thinking that might be a better tool to be able to place them in. It was not, and now, you, you know, the professionals out there are probably looking at me like, dude, dude, there's an easy way to do this. Just click this button. But I did not know this button, so I spent hours trying to figure this out. And I kind of did to an extent, but I was not happy with the results at all. Mm -mm, it was kind of meh. So I tried a completely new idea, and this new idea was I wanted to have three trays, and the idea is that there would be spotlights from above coming down each one. And uh, so I began modeling. So the problem I had was how to control the spotlights going down on the trays, so I tried to model in some sort of shades for my lights, and then bring it into Keyshot. 
Now, uh, when I was in Kenny's shot, I quickly realized that I had really no idea what I was doing, and you can kind of tell from the still shot that I literally have no idea what I am doing. Ah, oh, Jacob. Stay simple. Keep it simple, Jacob. My word. Okay, I'm gonna keep it simple, and we'll see what we get. I'm starting to get a bit annoyed at this challenge now. And I think that's because I tried to overdo myself. So, coming to the realization that I really had no idea what I was doing, I decided to go back to basics and did a tutorial on how to do three point lighting within Keyshot. And it was now that I started to get some actual decent results that I was actually kind of happy with. I decided to keep things super simple and just put a tray on a pillar and just from there fiddled around with the lighting and the colors till I got something that was actually rather nice, if I do say so myself. All right, so I'm really happy with how this one came out. So, <clears throat> this is a test one. So the idea is it's based off this really cool game called Monument Valley. Awesome game, just like beautiful to look at. So I've made it sort of in that style, but what I want to do is instead of just having one, I want to have sort of a three stack, like that. So with that in mind, I set to work back in Fusion and created the three pillars and then placed each tray on top of each pillar like so. Once I got the positions perfect, um, I then added the different colours and also rounded the corners of the boxes, gave them a nice bevel, and then took the whole thing into Keyshot. Now this next stage, since I'd already set up the lighting and everything, this is really just me playing around finding the different materials and different colours that matched. And of course this is going to be a very boring time lamp, so instead of showing you uh, the different colours that I chose, I'm going to show you how I got the gradients on the pillars, which was like my most asked question when I posted this picture on Instagram. So step one, under textures you'll find an option for opacity. So what you want to do is drag your opacity over onto your opacity levels on your different material. And once it's active, instantly you'll notice that there's an opacity on it, but of course it looks very, very wrong. So to fix that look, what you want to come down is to the mapping types, which you'll find down here. Click the drop down and choose sphere. This makes the gradient effect act like a sphere and not a plane, which gives you the desired effect. Okay, so it is now 10 to 11. I am so happy with how it turned out really really happy with today's work and uh, here it is so officially <laughs> even though now i'm heading to bed i'm officially allowed out of my room oh boy So if you want to try your own lock yourself in your room and learn anything sort of challenge, this is what you got to do. Number one is of course you got to have food, tea and whatever stuff you need in your room. Very important. Number two is you need to have a very, very definite outcome. You got to be like, I want to do this and this by the end of the time. You can't be like, I want to get good at this particular skill. You got to be like, I want to be able to do. Number three is start by getting familiar with your particular skill. Uh, but as soon as you sort of like roughly know it, then start experimenting. Start sort of figuring it out for yourself. Now, if you want to learn Keyshot, in the description below, I have linked to all of the tutorials that I used in this day of learning. And now this is where I need to give a shout out to a guy called Espon Oxholm. Really sorry if I got your name wrong. But this guy, oh my gosh, his YouTube channel is fire. So ridiculously good. If you want a key shot tutorial, his channel is the place to go. So thank you so much for making those. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought of this sort of process of a video. I really enjoyed the process personally and it's proof that you can learn a lot in such a short period of time if you do a lot of undistracted focused work. I really enjoyed it. Anyway, please like this video, give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this. But I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video where I will learn another skill related to design. I'm not sure what yet, but we'll find out. Maybe comment below, and, you know, a, a software program or some sort of skill you think I should learn. That'd be fun. All right. Adios. See you later. Bye.